cents per service unit. Uh, you do the ship channel, there's a zero charge for any type of development. San Jacinto, there's a zero charge for any type of new development. Huntington Bayou, $10.24 per service unit. Greens Bayou, $13.4 once per service unit. Clear Creek, .39 cents service unit. Buffalo Bayou, $16 per service unit. Grays, uh, $8 per service unit. Uh, Baker Reservoir at zero adds zero. So essentially, the majority of the, the fee will be assessed to development in districts D, K, and, and I uh, uh, with regard to this particular fee. Um, it is our request that we recommend that the assessment fee be administered uh, as the wastewater drinking fee is as well as the well the wastewater fee as well as the drinking water fee whereby the, the entire city is used uh, in the calculation with regard to this particular fee. We know that when uh, we developed three ports of the city, uh, when infrastructure was not an issue, uh, I mean when infrastructure was an issue, uh, it was the full city that paid uh, with regard to capital improvement projects whereby everybody paid into uh, uh, developing our infrastructure. Now, uh, we're asking that new development in this particular area, these particular areas among uh, Sims and Vents, uh, have to now pay a disproportionate amount to provide infrastructure for their area, area. when we had the entire city, uh, three-fourths of the city, uh, we were all in this thing together. So now we, we have this fee, and I understand that uh, the voters voted for this particular fee, but, what, but my request is that uh, we, uh, we leverage the fee or we calculate the fee the same way we do our wastewater and our drinking water fee, and that citywide as opposed to cutting the city up and, and making development for a particular area, making developers have to come in, they want to come in this particular area, uh, an area that we already know is under, um, underdeveloped, uh, underutilized, uh, uh, to have them to pay that disproportionate amount, I don't think it's fair, and I don't think that's what Houston is all about. So I'm, I'll be requesting that my colleagues vote no on this particular calculation uh, 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 with regard to how we move forward on this uh, developer impact fee, because I think it disproportionately affects uh, uh, a portion of the city and will negatively uh, will dissuade developers in this part of the city because they have to pay. Uh, this impact fee, uh, which some parts of the city don't have to pay anything. Thank you. Uh, I have some great sympathy to Councilmember Green. I would point out that there's a reason that Attics Reservoir and Parker Reservoir and Ship Channel don't pay any drainage impact fee, is that the drainage is there. That's what they're created for. But uh, under state law, can we take the money generated in one watershed and use it in, in others? Once, the, once you adopt the service area boundaries, whatever they may be, in this case there are eight of them, once council adopts those, any funds collected within the service area can only be expended within the service area. They cannot be moved. Must the service area conform to watershed boundaries? Yes, per state law. Per state law. The, per state law, the watershed boundary, the, the drainage and the fee cannot be assessed across watershed boundaries. So, rebuild Houston requires that we create a drainage impact fee. And state law says if we have a drainage impact fee, it must reflect watershed boundaries. That is correct. Uh, now, the drainage impact fee itself is subject to a council vote, how much of the drainage impact That is correct. So we cannot assess a just blanket fee citywide, or spend money citywide, but we have flexibility in the actual amount that we assess. As, as with your water and wastewater impact fees, you adopt those based on informa the information presented is the maximum allowable, and the council has the discretion to make a determination at what rate you will actually impose the fees or what, what rate you will actually use for collection purposes. So the, uh, the numbers that were distributed by Councilor Green are the maximum allowable, not any recommendation from the they, are, at this point. they are the maximum allowable as calculated under state law, but the final numbers cannot exceed those numbers, and it is with the discretion of this body to determine what those rates are. Thank you. Councilor Brad. Thank you, Mayor. And I thank you for addressing those questions, and I had a conversation with my colleague, 
my earlier question, I was trying to um, state it in a way that it didn't appear a certain way. Because if you don't have development in certain areas, would this, uh, you know, not encourage development to come if they see this? Um, because when you look at it, in certain areas, like for instance, in the, and I share the area that Councilmember Green is talking about, when you look at the particular area, there's no uh, tremendous, you know, growth. You don't have everyone flocking. Say, oh, we want to build over there. That's not the, you know, the, the conversation. It's happening in other parts of town. So I was trying to, you know, to answer the question of the day, I mean, earlier related to this, if you don't see that tremendous amount of growth, why is this the case? And I understand that we're not ready anything right now, we make those decisions later, but how do we communicate that to our constituents? Because what it looks like on paper, it reflects the same concerns that Councilmember um, Green has, you know, with respect to Matt Parker and addressing those questions. I'm trying to see how do we communicate that to the constituents because what it looks like, um, it looks, you know, I'm, I'm just confused on how to relate this and what it looks like on paper. Would help. Councilmember, I would go back and say that the projections that were used for the 40 horizon were based out of the regional metropolitan planning organization and I don't know the details of how they project their growth, but this is where they project the growth will occur. So the reason that the numbers in in the Sims Vince area are what they are is because they the region is projecting that's where growth will occur. And so what we've done is calculated what would be the cost to serve that new growth, hence why the charges in that particular area may be different than other parts of the city. So your point is well taken, but the Metropolitan Planning Organization looks at all factors of growth and development within the area. That's not something that we, Public Works, would necessarily do. But I'm assuming at some level they have factored in all those cost factors for development, and that's still where they are projecting the growth to occur. Madam Mayor, who will monitor this, and what will be the process of this moving forward when we look at it? You said this is, this is not an actual number, the 57 this is not the actual number of just a projection right now? No, ma'am. That is the maximum that you could So consider. this is going to be the maximum. So, Mayor, earlier you said it would come back before council to see exactly what the cost would be. Will we make that decision on council? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. And if you uh, look at your handout, the uh, next to the last page has an adoption schedule, and it shows a, an actual public hearing on proposed a fee would be... Uh, March 6th is the tentative date. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilor Bedeks. Thank you, ma'am. Quick question, and forgive my ignorance. Uh, can we change the watershed boundary, or would that be too difficult? It, it's about where the water flows. It has nothing to do with our, what we want or not, don't want. Okay. Councilor Noriega. Uh, I'm confused. Um, are the questions that my colleagues asking me, are, are they about, really about whether we're discouraging development in parts of town that have not been developed, where other parts of town that may have more resources are not being hit with the same fee? Is that, is that what we're talking about? We're talking about discrimination here. What are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah. May, I, may I address my colleague if he wishes? Yeah. You may uh, yield your time. It's for, about, tap in, it's it's a, just say it. It's a, no, it's about development for a particular town whereby the infrastructure has lagged. There's been right. less uh, infrastructure there. However, when we developed three-fourths of the rest of the city, there was, no, there was no fee. There was no a, a added fee. Do you think this would make the difference in terms of whether we have or whether we don't have that? <coughs> Some of the, it sounds, I'm, I'm clear where the parts of town are we're talking about. If I'm a developer and I have an opportunity to put a multifamily, uh, a class A multifamily unit in one particular part of the town uh, that has uh, an impact fee while, while I can go to another particular part of town and there's no fee, I'm going to probably go where it's going to be cheaper for me to be able to develop for because I can make more profit. So the answer is yes. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Councilmember, yeah, I thought there was something. Well, I agree with Councilmember uh, Green. Uh, the, the issue is that it doesn't apply to an area that's already developed. So, uh, just on its face. 
uh, it would only apply to underdeveloped areas across the city. And those underdeveloped areas happen to be largely in. If, if uh, I might reclaim my time, yes, I, yes. I get that. I get that. The, the, but the perception that there's some penalty for some parts of town it is, is probably a concern. And you're saying we're going to have a public hearing about this? Yes, ma'am. When we actually get to the point of wanting to set uh, the rates. Right. And, and the other mitigating issue is that if you want to put a large development in an already heavily developed area of town, the property values there uh, and the, the cost of land is, is different, and so both of those have to be calculated. Um, I, I just think it's important that certain parts of town do not feel like they somehow are, you know, sucking up some kind of inappropriate thing. I think we've got to do a better job of explaining this, and I'm not entirely convinced that my colleagues don't have a very helpful point. So um, I, I just I just have some concern here. We, 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 we go to great lengths to encourage development, and you know, all of a sudden we've got sort of this bump here. So I, I just think we need to keep talking about it. Yes, ma'am. Council Member Green. 